Yo, what's going on? It's your boy Primetime Pat here with another video. Guys, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. Trying to get these followers up. Um, this video is going to be a real quick video. It's basically a guy. He's telling you the importance of you guys with your spouse having your financials together and being debt free and you guys being on the same page. And it's very important because it's usually one person and the other person not financially straight. And if both of you guys are not financially straight or got your heads on, on heads straight, it'll be disaster in the long run. But let's go ahead and go through this video. About. Come on. Is that level of alignment with your spouse, with the person that God says you're supposed to do life with this person? Yeah. If you can't run fast, then why are you even doing this thing? And so I think it's too many couples... They get married, but there's they're still this selfishness of like, well, I want my way and she wants her way and we'll find some compromise. That's fine, but you're going to move a whole lot slower yeah. in your wealth building journey. And I know you're big on, I want to find someone yeah. who I can build wealth with, who has the same legacy we're running towards. Because, yeah. you know, marriage is either growing, uh, growing further apart or growing together. Yes, sir. Only with two directions it can go. Yeah. Or it's just stagnant and you get scum on the pond. Right. And that's not a good marriage either. Right. So the, the conversations we had, and truthfully, Ramsey was a blessing because we're already talking about all this stuff Absolutely. every single day. Mm -hmm. And so I knew she was debt free. I knew what her goals were. And even as we talked about like, hey, would you want to buy a, what do you think about people, like a modest house? She's like, absolutely. I think that's the right move. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to find one that mm -hmm. is still beautiful. That's still, it's not like we're struggling. You know, people think it's. See, I was finding a wife that was not big into getting everything where they're going to be wasting their money made the relationship move by so smoothly you can't have one person that's saving and being financially responsible and then somebody else that wants to spend and do this and that and don't even got their uh their money in order it's not going to work it's either that person that's responsible is going to grow tired of you or if he he or she feeds into your um, spending habits, you go, you're both gonna go broke, basically. It's not gonna work. But when you have two people that are both responsible, it moves very smoothly and very fast. You guys will see you guys, when you guys have a plan and you stick to that plan, you guys are gonna move very fast. It's either your life has to suck and you have to live a, a terrible quality life or you have to live way beyond your means. Right, right. We were both resourceful enough to find the sweet spot. How old were y'all then? I mean, uh, in 20, let's see, we got married in 2018. Oh. We got the townhome in 2019. And so I was uh, 30. 30 years old. Yep, yep. And she was 29. You know, this generation of 30 year olds, George, they want to go get the fancy high rises and, you know, the real fancy condos and fancy townhomes and even some get some fancy houses um and especially in the south they're like i want some land i want yeah. i want a big single family home in the nicest area i'm like well you know williamson county where ramsey is it's the like 11th wealthiest county in the nation yes so the average home is going for like eight hundred thousand dollars and it's not even a big home and they're they're very normal homes exactly and so it's a tough time and it's obviously it's gotten crazier since we bought a house because yep, yep. our house that townhome appreciated like crazy did you sell it or you do we sold it and got a single family wow. a few years back and i think it sold it sold for 529 three years later what if it's three so the appreciation on that that'll beat your freaking 401k <laughs> so i'm telling you like get in the game even if it's not your forever home or whatever the crap get in the game because that is a another wealth hack yes it's just buying a house when you're financially ready even if it's not your dream home oh my god and exactly like he said do things when you're financially ready and the only way you're going to get financially ready is by saving your breath or investing it that's the only two ways going on vacations where you spend two thousand dollars fifteen hundred it's not going to do it it's not going to do it. You can only do it when you're making a certain amount of money. But if you're coming from the bottom and you're coming up or that's why you guys see every year you're doing the same thing, waiting for tax season to get money. And it's just a cycle you're going through because you're too busy spending money. You're doing you're too busy spending money and not saving money. Some things you got to cut out of your life. If you guys cut some things out of your life, you're going to see 
your bank account grow so fast and then you can go ahead and spend here restaurant here vacation here but get rid of your debt over the pandemic you guys got into this business credit card thing and all that you got no businesses AR project music production. you guys were just messing up your credit when you see certain people doing this it's because they know how to flip their money you guys do not know how to flip your money but remember we have to pay these things back that's the only issue it's okay to get them but it wasn't meant to be sp spent on vacations and stuff like that and you don't know how to pay it back you think of everything oh I'm gonna write it off I'm gonna write it off you guys are still in debt you gotta get out of debt so George you sold that town home for five and I'm pretty sure y'all put some money with it or did y'all put some money oh yeah single home exactly so we we had all of that equity rolled 100 percent of the equity was okay. paid off okay. into the next home on top of all the cash wow. we took on a real small mortgage knocked that out okay in about a year wow and then we moved on and so it's been paid off now for a while and now we've just been stacking up more cash and saving up for the next thing and so once you get used to that muscle you're like well we know we can live off of five thousand dollars a month facts. our lifestyle hasn't changed facts facts That's like good. we have exactly like you said look how much you say you can live off of and your lifestyle doesn't change. Like I said in my other videos, a couple of videos back, go and look at it. I said, it's your mindset. He already has his mindset. Even though I make some more money, doesn't mean I'm gonna spend more money. Your mindset gotta be straight before you do even anything. So get out, get your minds right. Just because you got a $10,000, $20,000 raise at work doesn't mean all of a sudden, oh, I can spend more money. I can get that bag. No, live the same where you were so you can save more money. Then when you get to a certain threshold and your your everything is together, you got your house, money's put aside, then you can start spending it. But again, like he said, you if you're married and you're doing this you need a spouse <laughs> you need a spouse that stands firm on it and not going to lead you guys astray because too many of us are on instagram and this and that seeing people do this and that we don't know how they're doing it and you know that's not, you can't really do that and you end up messing yourself up in the end because you want stop stop wanting you can only do needs have nicer stuff we save up and buy a nice car but overall you know we're not now like well we need a ten thousand dollar lifestyle now <laughs> you know like even though we could yes we we just have bigger goals and just we got no one to impress anymore you know i'm a dad you know who am i trying to impress i want to impress that baby that's it you know what especially people with kids I, y'all got kids and y'all doing the most nonsense that's that's the worst part y'all should be the biggest savers You can't have kids and still be wanting to do the same nonsense. Once those kids came, <laughs> it's not about you anymore. It's not about fun. You definitely got to get shit in order. But George, you know, you can beat them. I never told you this. Um, never told you this or anyone that's um, outside of, well, in Ramsey. I've said this on my show before, but one of the biggest regrets that I doing was buying my first home. Mm. When I saw you buy that town home, and I was like, George is that free? I know he making some money. And this dude went and bought a townhome. And then I moved out to Columbia, South. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And bought all that land and a big old beautiful home. And if you remember, right around the time you got that, that townhome, I sold my home. Yeah. And I went and bought me a townhome in Nashville. Because I was like, why do I have this much? Like, why am I? And it's just me. I don't have no wife. Yeah, I did have a dog, but I, I, it was just me. And I was like, this is too much for me. And I, and I could be a better steward with my money. And I went and got the town home and then resigned and moved a year later after that. But it was like, I really want you to know, man, like your lifestyle and watching you is helping people. I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? A lot. I was like, man, like he said, you got to, 
if you guys example. and if you guys don't know know better you gotta follow, follow good examples you guys are watching these rappers and this and that living in condominiums paying five thousand six thousand people throwing out these numbers and saying well i can do this why would I want to stay at five thousand six hundred thousand dollar apartment? I don't have people coming by every day just for me to look at a view, and I'm blowing money. I used to think when I was younger, I have no kids, no wife. Oh, I want to live in that five hundred thousand to a million dollar crib, four or five bedrooms. Why do I need that? And I don't even and I don't even care to be living with people like that. Why would I need a house like that? I was looking at this one of my dream homes. It makes no sense for me to get it, but home is about five million, but then you're looking at the payments there around thirty seven thousand a month. Money I can be using to um invest somewhere else. Why would I do that when I can get a townhouse 200, 300,000? With a 1500, 1500, $2,000 a month payment. You gotta, we gotta, we gotta have common sense, like I said, guys. Just being honest, it was like, man, I'm making good money. I'm debt free. I'm what? I'm like, man. Yeah, you could afford it. I'm like, yo. It wasn't a question of money. Right. But I was, if I could do it over again, I would have got a $200,000 townhome for just me paid that off and i probably would have rented it knowing me and my philosophy um but it was like man i really do appreciate you for practicing what you preach yo fam life doesn't wait for your there it goes it, it gets simple guys once you get the nonsense out your head then ask those questions to your spouse or whoever you're dating do they have those same philosophies because if they don't you're gonna be fucked If they, oh, I need the newest things, or I can't buy nothing old, this and that, and you guys don't even have the money for it, all I can say is good luck. But God bless y'all, man. Stay prayed up. It's your boy, Primetime Pat.